Hey guys, this is Abhishek and in this video I will show you the scikit-learn's linear regression. So linear regression is one of the very basic form of uh, machine learning where you basically train a model or train the machine to predict the behavior of your data based on some variables. So for example, in case of a linear regress regression, as you can see, uh, the name suggests linear that means the two variables which are on the x-axis and y-axis should be linearly correlated so an example for that can be let's say uh, you are running a sales promotion and expecting a certain number of count of customers to be increased now what you can do is you can look at the previous promotions and plot it over here on the chart when you ran it and then try to see whether there is an increment into the number of customers whenever you did the promotions and with the help of the previous historical data you try to figure it out or you try to estimate what will be the count or what will be the estimated count for my current promotion this will give you an idea to do the planning in a much better way about how many number of stalls maybe you need or how many increased number of employees you really need to serve the customer so things like that but the idea is in the machine learning is to basically estimate the future value based on the historical data by learning the behavior or patterns from the historical data now in some cases values will be linearly upward that means uh, uh, whenever x is increasing y is also increasing or whenever y is increasing x is also increasing that means they have a correlation and they are increasing it together even in some cases there may be a linear downward relationship and an example for that can be that police department is running a campaign to reduce the number of robberies into a particular uh, residential area so in that case whenever they are running the campaign you know they are seeing that there is a downward slope in terms of the number of crimes and that's an example of linearly downward relationship into the data now it but now the idea is that uh, whenever the next campaign will run what output the police department will give to their senior officials about the improvement that they will get okay so these are like two different example i wanted to show you but if you by this time you must have understood that the basic logic behind linear regression is to first of all make sure that you have a linear relationship whether up upward whether downward whatever it may be but there should be a really linear relationship and then only you can move ahead all right so with that let's move ahead with the example that I want to show you and for that we I need to uh, load some data so what I can do is let me import uh, first of all the from the sklearn dot data sets I need to write from sklearn and uh, I will write there are a couple of different data sets as I, as soon as I entered the load, there is uh, Boston, breast cancer, diabetes, digits, and all of that. So what I'll do is I will just go ahead and uh, load the Boston dataset, and uh, I will import a couple of others. Import NumPy library. I will show you why we need this. Import pandas as PD, and we will need to import matplotlib just to uh, let's say create the histogram because before running any linear regression model you sometimes want to understand the bare distribution of the data matplotlib as plt and uh, let's import c born library which is again uh, another data visualization library dependent on the matplotlib to give us the linear fit the line which you just saw over here this line uh, with the help of just one function or one command as sms and to plot the labels uh, plots in line we will say matplotlib 
percentage matplotlib inline. Okay, after importing these basics library, which I believe you will require in pretty much every case where you want to run the machine learning uh, programs. So after this, uh, what we can do is we can create one object which is Boston and initialize the load underscore Boston. Once we have this, what it has is couple of different variables. So for example, if I write Boston dot, so it has data which basically is saying the all the data points related to it. The target variable because it is properly formatted in terms of what are data variables, what are target variables that's why you are seeing the target description so description is another uh, nice one because uh, what you get is some description about the data I will just write the print of description to see whether it formats it or not let's see this yeah so with the help of print command it will properly format the data with no those uh, remove those uh, backslash and the new line character and all so this is giving you a much better information so data set characteristics the number of instances that means the number of rows number of attributes basically the number of columns the median value 14th attribute which if I will show you down there is the median value of owner occupied home in thousand of dollars and that's basically our target variable or the wet variable which we need to predict as well as we call this the dependent variable because this variable is dependent on all these different factors like uh, age proportion of owner occupied units built prior to 1940 or maybe tax full value property tax rate per thousand and maybe RM which is average number of rooms per dwelling all of these factors are basically helping us to drive the value of median value. So whenever you are defining your problem statement, like in our case, which I mentioned at the start, that you want to in, uh, see the effect of campaign. Now, how you will see the effect, then you need to decide what your target variable is. And in that case, I mentioned that the uh, number of uh, customers that will be increasing in when you are running the campaign so that means the number of customers is basically in that case is the target variable but in case of Boston data set the median value of owner occupied home in thousand dollar is a target data set because the new home buyer will be looking for the expected value of a particular type of house by looking at its uh, what the size of the house is what the how many number of rooms that you have and all of that information okay so once you have understood all of this information you get a couple of uh, other so saying that this is a copy of a UCI machine learning housing data set and then who created it and then further references at the end now let's go ahead and uh, try to visualize some of the data points so first of all uh, what we have is the median value as our target variable so let's go ahead and uh, try to visualize and see its distribution so what we can use is we can use the matplotlib library over here which is plt and uh, go down here and say plt dot hist and what we can do is we can write Boston dot target okay and then we can also specify the number of bins that we want so let's specify bins let's say we want 30 for example matplotlib has no attribute as hist okay all right uh, let me check quickly over here the library so what we need is uh, matplotlib but hist is basically part of pyplot so i'll just execute that and run it again so this will get to know whenever you will experience it more again and again about uh, the visualization libraries and in the previous uh, videos also i've shown you the different types of matplotlib pyplot libraries so let's go ahead and execute that all right so 
here is your target variable uh, distribution which seems a uh, little bit uh, left skewed over here and apart from uh, histogram what we can do is uh, let's say if you want to remove these values uh, all of these data points you can add semicolon and now those values have been removed and what you are seeing is just the histogram uh, apart from that what you can use is let's say x label so the number of bins maybe number of bins and plt dot y label and this is basically count right so let's execute that and what we get is count and number of bins now if you will show this information to your end user it will not be very relevant for that person because what they will not understand what that number of bins is and what the number of count is so what basically count is representing is the number of houses that you have from these parts like over here somewhere around 30 over here somewhere around 40 54 or 55 so that's your y-axis is nothing but the number of houses so instead of saying count what you can say is number of houses not the number of houses number of houses and then the x-axis is basically your target that means price in thousand dollars dollar if I go ahead and execute it, I get the much better uh, representation of my data with the number of houses and prices in thousands of dollars. So that's basically ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand to thirty thousand, thirty to forty. So that's how you can make much more, you know, uh, sense from your data because by looking at it it seems like uh, anywhere between 10 to 30 or anywhere between let's say 15 to 25 is where the maximum number uh, of houses are in that price range and very few when you are really going towards thirty thousand dollar forty thousand or fifty thousand dollars okay so after this um, let's try to see the relationship between the variable and the relationship is uh, basically uh, you have different variables our target variable is this which we are using as a boston dot target and let's try to see one of the very interesting property since i have previously also explored this data set so i know that uh, average number of rooms per dwelling is an interesting property to see the relationship as well as it is quite indicative that as the number of rooms are increasing the price of the house will also increase so let's see the relationship all right so what we need is again the what we are trying to create is basically a scatter plot to see the relationship so plt dot scatter and x axis is basically the data and y axis is basically your target but if you remember the data is basically uh, containing all of the data points so what we need is all the rows by we can specify it by colon all the rows and the specific number of columns so if i go up and show it starts with zero so zero one two three four five so five is basically my index number for the average number of rooms but dwelling okay so all right five and again i can specify x label and x label is nothing but price in dollar thousands and plt dot y label is basically your number of uh, not number uh, num average number of rooms let's say and let's go ahead and execute and here we are 
So it clearly shows that as the number of rooms increase, the price in thousands of dollars is also increasing, right? So this is basically an indicative of linearly upward relationship and give us a good use case where we can run the linear regression model on it and try to basically predict the outcome for the number of prices. Let's say uh, you are a real estate agency and you want to show it to your customer to that you are a very data driven then basically you can show these plots and specify that if you are going for let's say uh, the number of rooms so I see one issue and the issue is is basically I have just swapped the x and y axis because x axis is basically the average number of rooms this is the x-axis but I just changed it to y-axis over here so let me change that control x and put it over here execute it again okay now it's good uh, much more meaningful I was a bit surprised why the number of rooms are going really up to 50 so as the number of rooms are increasing the price is also increasing so if somebody is going for the number of room 6 then they should get somewhere around $20,000 to $25,000. So in case of seven rooms, you can figure it out what the uh, average rate may be and for the if the eight or nine, whatever the room size is. So this will give them a trust that uh, based on the real data, you are basically telling them how much they should really invest in a particular type of room because generally whomsoever is new, is not really aware about uh, the locality standard the prices and all of that and this will really have now uh, since it's it will going to be a long video so I will just stop it over here and what I really want is so far I have just explored one variable what you do is explore couple of other variable with the help of the scatter plot and try to see what relationship you get and in the next video then I will show you how you can fit the line, the uh, regression line over here on this plot with the help of the Seaborn library and then move ahead with the prediction uh, by fitting the linear model and uh, doing the prediction from the data set. So that's pretty much all and I'll meet you in the new video with those additional topics.